I want to thank all our panelists. Um, I'll yield uh, five minutes to myself for questions. Um, uh, Mr. Medlock, uh, Mr. Jennings on your far right there runs a refinery. He says it's going to cost him 10 to 15 cents more to refine gasoline if we uh, uh, lift the ban. What do you think about that? Uh, well, I think undoubtedly if we lift the ban, domestic price of crude will go up, and so that will actually affect the bottom line of any refinery, particularly those that are processing light sweet crude. So uh, the cost to refine crude will certainly rise, but the price of the finished products themselves are still going to be determined in our national marketplace. It is fully fungible because there are no barriers to trade there. All right. Let me, let me be more specific. He said gasoline prices at his refinery would go up 10 to 15 cents if we lift the ban. I disagree. And he would lay off. Yeah. I forget how many workers. Uh, he, he mentioned a lot of workers. So weigh in on that. And keep it simple, Mr. Medlock. Your, your testimony is complicated. <laughs> well, keep it simple. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, fair enough. The issue, uh, in all fairness, though, is, is not quite so simple. Um, but uh, in point of fact, uh, we export products today and we see healthier margin, margins today at refineries because not only do we have cheap crude domestically because of the onset of, of production that we have seen in the last four to five years. Uh, but we also have cheap natural gas, which actually helps the bottom line of refineries. And we also have an excess of refining capacity relative to what we consume because demand today is lower than it was in 2006, 2007, and 2008. All three of those things coupled with the closure of refineries overseas have really helped propel the U.S. refining industry into a sort of new paradigm, one in which we are actually exporting as much uh, finished product today as we did just back in 2006, or in terms of what we imported in 2006. So uh, when you look at that and you com combine all those factors together, yes, exporting crude oil will raise the price of crude oil to refineries, but those other benefits are still there. So it is not clear to me that refiners will actually be forced to shut down. Their bottom lines will be affected. But whether or not they close and end up laying people off is a completely different issue. Uh, Mr. Melito, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, the Chairman mentioned the Keystone XL pipeline and the glut of crude oil coming into the United States. How would that affect any of this, if it would? It is huge. We are looking to have a uh, market in North America that works efficiently together. And a lot of the refiners, particularly in the Gulf Coast, have reconfigured and made upgrades to take on the heavier crudes. That would naturally come through the Keystone XL pipeline from our uh, friendly trading partner to the north. So infrastructure is a, a very important component of this whole debate, and uh, we need to make sure we are moving forward in a way to capitalize on these infrastructure opportunities because they alone create a lot of jobs. Our country is uh, projected over the next 12 or 13 years to put uh, more than a trillion dollars into infrastructure projects because of this oil and gas renaissance. So we, sh we should not uh, turn our, our eye to that opportunity. The uh, Keystone XL pipeline is supposed to come down to Port Arthur, Texas. I used to represent all those refineries. Mr. Weber now represents them all. Amen. Uh, but uh, uh, let me ask you another question about uh, the Middle East, uh, kind of a policy, and anybody can weigh in on this. So uh, we lift the ban, so to speak. How does that affect us uh, energy-wise and politically uh, with the Middle East? Uh, because that's, you know, when we talk about the Middle East, Everybody talks about making them irrelevant, you know, uh, because of their, uh, their situation, but they hold a lot of the crude oil we get. Politically and economically, would this affect our relationship with the Middle East? Anybody can weigh in on this. Well, I'm, I'm sure Dr. Medlock has some, some input on that, but one thing I would point to is the need for us as a nation to look at energy security and link it to foreign policy. Those two need to be addressed holistically. And from, from you know, just a fundamental standpoint, if we are taking down the walls to ex that we have that are right now up along our coast to exports, whether it is LNG, crude oil, we are sending a pretty strong signal to those around the world that we are going to play as an energy superpower like we should. So we are sending a signal and we are also putting more supplies into the marketplace and creating a better scenario. The production we have had in this huge increase where we have gone from 5 to 8 million barrels a day has allowed the global market to be able to absorb and have a greater cushion when you are looking at things like Iran sanctions and things like that. So it is it, a huge uh, benefit to, the, to energy security when we are able to push more supplies into the global market. But uh, like I said, I think Dr. Medlock uh, probably has a, a lot smarter answer than that. And also, Dr. Medlock, while you are answering that question, uh, I have always thought that the United States, Canada, and Mexico, um, we, we ought to work together on energy issues, energy independence, energy security, economically. Um, are we doing that 
any better than we have in the past? Make it quick, if you can, please. Yeah, great question. Um, on, the, uh, on the issue of the Middle East, they will never be irrelevant. Um, it's too large an energy exporter into the global marketplace, and uh, we're not the only consumer in the world. So when you talk about a globally interconnected marketplace, they're, they're going to matter no matter what we do. Um, with regard to U.S., Canada, and Mexico, I would say we're not actually optimizing uh, uh, the relationships that we have with, with Canadians and the Mexicans. And um, we're presented with some actually new real opportunities. And one of those north of the border would be with regard to the development of the oil sands uh, uh, production opportunities and moving those, that oil via pipeline instead of by rail or somewhere else where it's actually going to be at a cost disadvantage relative to moving it here. So it's going to be more polluting, which ironically is exactly what is trying to be prevented. So uh, with regard to Mexico, in terms of what's happening with energy reform there, there's tremendous opportunity to deepen the energy trade relationship with that country, particularly as it begins to open up their, si their upstream sector to foreign investment. Thank you. I will yield five minutes to the ranking member. 